And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna, and happy, happy Thanksgiving. Today, I am going to show you an easy way to cook a whole turkey that will roast in half the time and all of the skin gets good and crispy and brown because everybody likes that good crispy brown skin. So I'm going to show you how we are going to cook this turkey. Now I like to use a uh, roaster. One of the roasters that you can you know cook in out of your oven and I find especially on holidays that oven space is premium real estate. So this frees up your oven for your other side dishes. And I've used one of these roasters for years and I love it. So mine is just, I, I got it at Walmart. I've had it for years. Um, this is, this particular one holds like up to a 22 pound turkey. They come in different sizes. But the thing is, this has a rack in it that you can put down in it so you can lift the turkey out, which makes it very easy to do. Make sure that you put the, see it has little raised feet, if you will, those need to go down. But before I do anything, I'm gonna spray it with a non-stick spray. Now, you can preheat this for about 10 minutes. You don't have to, um, but you can. And I'm gonna do the prep here before I get started on the turkey. I like to put some chicken broth down in the bottom because the juices from the turkey will go in there and flavor that up and that makes a great gravy. And I'm going to put some celery. No need to trim the leaves, just wash it. I like to flavor it up with a little bit of celery down in there. And a whole onion. You don't even need to peel it. Just cut it in half. Come on, you threw the root in. That keeps all the um, leaves of the onion together. Leave the peel on because that really adds color to the gravy. And it, you know, in the olden days, they used onion peels as a natural dye. I don't know if you knew that or not, but that's it for that. Now, I have here a turkey that I have thawed in the refrigerator. You know, I find it takes about a week actually for a turkey to thaw. So make sure that you plan ahead and give yourself plenty of time to let your turkey thaw. Now, for those of you who maybe this is your first Thanksgiving or you've never cooked a turkey before, there's a couple of things to remember. Once you take it out of the package, this is what he will look like, but you need to know this. Up here, there is a bag in the neck area that has your giblets in it. I personally don't use these, but some people do. They use that to make their stock with. And then usually, I always work on a board that I can throw in the um, dishwasher because just for TV's sake, I'm gonna get some of the juices up here so it doesn't splatter everywhere. Um, you have to, it will come with its little eggs tucked into some skin. I cut that in half and inside this cavity is your neck. Now that you can save for stock. You can actually put it in the bottom of your pan, which is what I'm going to do, because that will add flavor to the gravy. Just put it right down in there. And then if you have any leftover ice crystals, which I do, it's pretty well thawed, but I do have a little bit of ice left. It's okay. I'll just take out that extra ice and make sure there's nothing else in there. There's nothing else up there. Now, traditionally, what you would do is trust these. I would stuff that with some onion and celery or something 
truss these legs back together, tuck those wing, wings underneath, or else cut a little slit and put it in there. That's not what we're going to do today. Then you put the whole thing on a rack in the oven. You can do that, and I, and I have many times, and it, and it takes you know, several hours to bake at 350, and it's delicious. But here's an easier way. This is breast side up. So you want to turn him back side up. I'm left-handed, so you'll have to bear with me here. Now, here's another little um, point. Underneath your board, make sure you have some of these little non-stick things because you do not want this board to move when you're doing the next part. Now, this is the um, neck end. And I'm going to cut some of this excess flab off. You need a good pair of scissors. Just going to cut some of this skin off because we don't need that extra skin. It's just going to render too much fat. I'm also going to cut the parts off that I cut to take the turkey legs out. And then, okay, here is your backbone. Just like you and I have a backbone, the turkey, you can also do this very thing with a chicken. You can see the beginning of the bone. What you're going to do is cut out that backbone. Now, what I like to do first is take a paring knife or something and just kind of outline the area that I want to remove. Okay? Now, the, the reason, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies are flaring. The reason that I like to do this is the turkey will cook a lot quicker. Okay, so we're going to outline where we're going to cut. Okay, you're going to run into some bone. That's okay. Then take a good pair of sharp scissors. You're going to be moving. We'll clean all this up. Going to be moving this board around quite a bit to work. Take some good sharp scissors and start cutting away at the meat against the backbone part. Okay. If you don't want to use scissors, you can use a knife. Be very careful. This is not a job for the kiddos. And go down in there, and you're carving out that backbone is exactly what you're doing. Okay, you see how we're just getting in there? Watch your fingers. We're cutting away the meat from the backbone. Turkeys are harder to do than chickens, but you can do it. And you'll find that once you get so far down in there, you're going to run into the cavity, which is the opening part here of the chicken. This is the little neck thing. Let's get that out of there. Okay? And you're just going to do this on both sides. If you find you need to get a cleaver, this is just an inexpensive Chinese meat cleaver. Be careful and do it this way. See how that just goes right through those bones? Okay? Easy work of carving up a chicken. Don't go all the way through. You just want to go to where you break open the bones, and we'll cut out any little loose things that I've got there. Let's take this. Until we break free that backbone. Okay? Point wherever you have raw poultry juices or equipment touching, you need to make sure that you clean that. Now, can you see how we've got that cut away from the backbone? I'm actually just going to take my scissors and cut out these little bones because I don't. The loose, anything loose like that you want to cut away because you don't want anybody biting into that, all right? We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now, once you get both sides cut, the backbone will just come right out with some final little, can use a knife, those scissors aren't doing it for me. There you go. 
that's the turkey backbone. Now, you can see here's a good shot of it. You can use this for stock. You can use this for so many different things. So do not throw that away. You can use him for a lot of different things. Let me see. I think I'll just put mine right here. My sink is clean because I just cleaned it. Leave him there. Now, here is your turkey cut wide open, okay? This is the inside. And in case you don't know it, you see these two little tiny little knots of meat right there? That's the best tasting thing on the turkey right there, those two little round things. Now, another good thing about doing it this way is the fact that you've got all this meat open ready to season. Now, I put some salt in a separate bowl because I certainly do not want to touch my salt cellar with my chickeny or turkey hands here, okay? You've got your breastbone here. Sometimes I will take scissors and just cut off those fine little pin bones because I find that will help it to stay um, flatter. Now, imagine this is what it was a few minutes ago, okay? We're going to turn him over and we're going to lay him flat with legs just like this. This is what you call a spatchcock turkey. You can also do it with chicken. Now, you can tuck these wings up under there if you want to. You can, I cut a little slit sometimes and tuck them in there. Or you can just let them go, whatever you want to do. But we want to season this side too. The advantage is, I know it seems like a lot of work. It's really not that difficult, especially once you've done it. It really is not that hard. Season it well. This is a good-sized little guy, all right? But the advantages to doing this are many. Number one, it cooks a whole lot faster. Number two, it makes carving a dream because when he's roasted, and I'm going to show you that, all you got to do is cut through there. You've got your legs separated. Cut here, you've got your wings separated, and you've got a beautiful whole turkey breast. Carving is a dream. And then all of the skin gets crispy. Because if you think about it, in the beginning when he was all tucked under there, oftentimes that underneath skin gets soggy. Now, this step is not necessary, but I like to take my hands and go up under the breast, loosen that skin, all right, and then take some butter, cut it into tablespoon-sized pieces, and tuck it up under that skin because that makes it taste divine. And the turkey breast meat doesn't dry out. You know how oftentimes your turkey breast will get really dry and not very good? Well, this eliminates that problem. You can do this stage and go ahead and salt the meat, just like I did, and let this rest overnight. And what happens is that salt penetrates into the meat and then it, it just flavors it makes it much more juicy and then you've got a wonderful turkey ready to go now we want to pick him up however you can come on thomas and put him in your roaster just like this i'm going to tuck his wings up under his neck and what's going to happen is this is going to cook in this roaster where this Size turkey would normally take about probably four hours in your oven. This is probably going to cook in about two at 350 degrees. That's one reason I like to spatchcock a turkey or a chicken. I'm going to take a quick break, just get him plugged up, clean up my mess, and disinfect my mess. And when I come back, we are going to make a wonderful little tart to serve alongside our turkey. I'll be back in just a minute. All righty, now our turkey's roasting, and oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of roasting turkey. 
we're going to make a quick little tartlet to go alongside it. Um, you know, we, we all do the, the mashed potatoes and the green beans and all that, and we've done many programs on that, so I thought we would do something a little different and show you some appetizer type things that you can serve at your holiday feast. These are the little mini phyllo dough cups, little shells that you can find in your freezer department. This is the only brand I find around me, but they're in the freezer department where you find the um, Cool Whip and the frozen pies and the uh, puff pastry and that kind of thing. Oftentimes you will find those little shells and they're perfect for just a little mini bite. I just thaw them for about two hours. That's all I do and put them, I like to bake them in a little mini muffin tin. You don't have to, but I find it keeps the shape a little better. This is just a little bit of a wheel of brie cheese. I'm using brie, but you don't have to. You could use cream cheese if you wanted, but I really like brie cheese. Don't eat it much, but sometimes at the holidays I do. I'm just cutting the little round off because I really just want this creamy inside part. I may leave the bottom part. This is totally edible. It's not that it's not. And then cut it into little pieces and put a little tiny piece in each little tart shell. Just a little bit. I need a little more in that guy. I don't want to leave you out. It's okay if it sticks up. It's going to kind of soften. Now Brie will not totally melt, but it'll soften and kind of spread out a little bit. I love it. I love it with fig jam on it. Oh, it's so good. Or like a candied walnut topping. Mm, really good. Very versatile. You can do anything with it. I love it. Each little package of those has 15 little tartlets in it. Just putting the this is real time, it takes a minute. But I find many times for me, I actually prefer the appetizers oftentimes to the whole meal. I really like appetizer-y type foods. If you can find some little mini brie bites, you can use those. I do see those sometimes. Okay. And there you go. That's just a little piece of brie in each one of those. This is the time to use that canned cranberry sauce that I, I like the whole berry, which is what we have here. This is the whole berry brie, or brie, the whole berry cranberry sauce, just one can. Put a little tiny spoonful on top of each one. Make sure your hands are clean. My hands are clean. I scrubbed them very well after that turkey. Just put a little bit of this. Now this will melt a little bit and just kind of go down in there and that brie cheese will soften up. You see we've got a whole cranberry in there. Let's find one that has a little more space. Oh, this is so good. Now I don't personally care for the, the jellied one that doesn't have the whole cranberry in there, but you can use that if you want to. It's up to you. And then you can stir this up and you can warm it if you want to. You could um, just leave it chilled, maybe stir in some orange zest, maybe a little bit of chopped pecans. You could make a chutney. It this is a very versatile product. Okay. Yeah, just a tiny one there. 350 degrees for about 10 minutes or so. And you have got a wonderful, easy to do appetizer that you can serve at your next holiday meal or really any time. These need to go in the oven. I'm going to just clean this up. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to make the cutest little cheese ball, a turkey cheese ball that your kids would love to help you with. Pop these in the oven and I'll be right back. All 
Alrighty, now our tarts are baking and we're just going to do a quick little easy cute little turkey cheese tray. These are just two cheese balls. You can buy them or you can make them, use your favorite recipe or just buy them. Um, and this is just two little rounds and you put one at the bottom and then one right above him and kind of just take your hands and shape it into a head with a little bit of a neck. You want two black olives for his little eyeballs and then a piece of a red pepper or you could use a pimento just as this little turkey gobbler because you know all turkeys have that little gobbler thing that hangs down. Okay, ain't you cute? Then you will want four or five different colors of crackers. I just have four different, I bought an assortment pack, I've got four different colors of feathers if you will, and I'm just gonna go from lightest to darkest. You wanna just kinda go under him, okay? All the way around, kinda layering up those feathers. You see what I'm doing here, he's just cute. I'm starting with the lightest, but you start with whatever you want. Your kids would really, really, really love to help you do this, that I know. Okay, just kind of put those crackers right under there, under his head area. His eyes are quick. Let's put those on last. I mean, it's going to keep knocking those off. All right. And then go to a slightly darker cracker. You could even change shapes. I'll just use these little square ones and just tuck those right underneath the other cracker. Okay, and I'll just, for time's sake, I'll show you what I'm doing. And, and you, you'll go all the way around. You'll, I'll show you a picture at the end. Then another shape, okay, tuck him under there. And then finally, the darkest one. And he just kind of tucks under there. And you're just gonna go all the way around with each layer until you have his feathers all done. Our turkey's done, and I want you to look at how beautiful this turkey is. One thing I forgot to mention to you, uh, the advantages of using these roasters. You see this lid? The steam from the heat rises, condenses, and falls back on the turkey. Makes your turkey moister. It's kind of a self-basting thing. You don't need to baste it. I love my roaster. Love it. Now, this is what it looks like when you take it out of the oven. This baby is tender. The wing fell off, but that's okay. The other wing, I haven't cut this, it's just coming off. You see how incredibly tender this thing, is? look at this, you ready? It just comes right off. It, it's amazing to me. Now you want to carve this in the kitchen. So just take your knife. Cut away the, way, the legs, look at that. How it just, look at this, it just falls apart. Now, in my house, they like the legs whole because I have two people that like to just eat the leg. So you can leave it whole or you can cut it, whatever you wanna do. Then we've got our turkey breast left and let's get him off of the, this is a bone, off of the, um, roasting rack. Just lift him up and that comes right out. And then you've got your beautiful whole turkey breast. The bones fall out. That makes life much easier when you are carving a turkey. Okay? Cut him in half, listen to that skin. You've got to cut that skin. I'm telling you, it just does. It makes life simpler. You can cut the thigh. You don't even really need to cut. I mean, seriously, this guy's falling apart. That's how tender 
and moist he is. There's a thigh and there's a leg. Up to you how you want to do it. I keep a little bowl beside me, which I did not get. Uh, I keep a little bowl and I put the parts there in it. And then when I'm ready to make soup the next day, that's what I use to make my soup or my pot pie. So I'm going to just keep that there. I mean, I can't believe how moist and just incredibly tender this turkey is. So, thank you. We're just going to put our extra little bit. Don't throw that away. That is good food. We'll just save that for soup. And then you're left with your beautiful bone that just fell right out. And you can cut. Now, another point. You want to always let your turkey rest for, say, 20 minutes or so before you start carving. And this will be, I promise you, the most delicious, moist turkey that you have ever eaten. A lot of people say, I don't like turkey. It's dry. It, it just tastes like chalk. Not this one. The butter melts, keeps that breast moist, which is typically what dries out the fastest. And I promise you, I've carved many turkeys in my life. This is the easiest turkey to carve. And that is why I spatchcock my turkeys and do them in the roaster for Thanksgiving or any other time. I don't cook turkey just at Thanksgiving. And there you go. You just want to finish slicing it up and then serve it up. Alrighty, now here is our completed feast. I just left one half of the turkey breast whole. The reason you might want to think about doing that if you're not serving a whole lot of people is if you leave it whole and this doesn't get eaten, it will stay moister longer. This will dry out quicker than this. So I typically will leave one half uncarved and then if it doesn't get eaten, put it in the refrigerator and then carve it as I need. But here is your whole carved up turkey. You saw how easy that was. I guarantee you, if you will try a roaster, even if you don't spatchcock it and you just put it in there and roast it whole, it will still be the most tender, juicy turkey. It's just, I love it, I just do. So here's a turkey. Here are our wonderful little brie tarts, our cranberry brie tarts, and our cute little cheese ball turkey that really would be fun to do with your kiddos. So make that with the kids and let them be a part of it. And it just, it just gets them in the kitchen with you. It's memories for a lifetime. Some of my fondest Thanksgiving memories are when I was little, my mama always made the turkey, you know, she stuffed the turkey the night before and then would put it in the oven on low overnight so it was ready the next morning to free up her oven space because she didn't have one of those. I don't think they even existed then. Um, but the night before I would always help her make the stuffing and put it in the turkey and get him in the oven. Those are some of my fondest memories and your children need to have those memories when they grow up and this is one way that they can have that memory. So thank you for joining with me. I hope and pray that your Thanksgiving is blessed beyond measure. Remember to be thankful, not only on Thanksgiving Day, but every day to our Heavenly Father who has blessed us abundantly. Thank you for joining with me. Happy Thanksgiving. Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.